Our next guest says the sense of crisis in Washington may actually improve the chances of tax reform. Joining us now is David Barnson. He's founder and CIO of the Barnson Group, a private wealth management firm overseeing more than $1 billion. Prior to starting his group, David was a managing director at Morgan Stanley. David, great to have you on. Good to be here. More likely because it's about political survival if they don't manage to pass something? I think so. I think that first of all, we already had a better setup for this. Just from a policy standpoint, the Treasury Department had already taken the lead, whereas with the health care situation, it was the Congress that was sort of driving it. And they, and they hadn't, I think, handicapped what, what hurdles were in front of them. So from everything we understand, they've teed it up much better, but then when you get to the politics of it, at this point, the uh, Republicans on the Hill, particularly in the House, are in desperate need of a victory. So it's interesting. I mean, you say, look, what everything you're hearing is actually that the work is being done and progress is being made here, and yet there are critics that say, hey, we're still lacking clarity, and you've got Paul Ryan talking about, you know, increasing efficiency, let's say, in the corporate tax system, but we've got no sense of what loopholes and what efficiency gains you can use to finance tax reform. And then we've got fights between President Trump and Mitch McConnell, tensions there too. Right. So there's, there's two different things there. Let me go to the second one yeah. in a moment. The first issue, I think, plays into the point I'm making. Yes. If they were leaking all of the different details, if all of the, that's the hardest part of tax reform is specificity. To come out right now, because there's going to be people that like it and people who don't, it invites all the complexity, it brings out the lobbyists, brings out the special interest, and it complicates the situation. The more that they can tee it up in advance and have um, all of the implications thought through from a policy standpoint, the better. They weren't doing that. They were kind of going one level at a time with health care. They hadn't thought through all the different levels. So I think that in this sense that that's going to work out better politically. The other issue you bring up, is, is sort of the, the elephant in the room. There is clearly a breakdown right now in the relationship between Republicans on the Hill, particularly on the Senate side, and President Trump. The, the, to me, that again is in a sort of paradoxical way reinforcing the need to get this done and the likelihood of it getting done. And by the way, it's not just the Senate and Republicans uh, and House and Congress. It's the president. He needs a victory. Needing a victory, though, and getting one, right, are two different things. Even if there is extremely high motivation here, as there appeared to be for health care reform, at least in theory, yeah. doesn't mean they're going to get it done. So when it comes to the nuts and bolts of um, coming together on some of the very specific details of tax reform, when you have so many competing interests, not just special interests, but the House Freedom Caucus on the one hand, more moderate Republicans, Republicans on the other hand, Democrats maybe, I, I mean, I don't know if they're left out of this discussion entirely. Oh, they will But be. how do they all, but uh, how do you satisfy all these constituents yeah, so that, actually get So uh, that, that to me is a very fair question. And the difference is that with health care, there really were Republicans, theoretically wearing the same uniform in totally different sides of the equation. The House moderates, particularly the Senate moderates, needed something different out of the bill and fought for something different than the Freedom Caucus types. And on the Senate side, Senator Lee, Rand Paul, thing, people like that. But when it came to tax reform, it's a completely different issue because there's so much more consensus starting off about the need for flatter rates on the individual income code and more competitive co situation with business income tax. So, yes, there are still some devil in details to work through, but the foundational elements are really agreed upon. Uh, among your clients, some of whom may have voted for the president, hoping for a tax cut at some point, maybe they haven't liked some of what else has gone on, but they wanted that tax cut. Uh, how concerned are they right now? Are they, you know, calling up congressmen who they may have donated to, et cetera, to try to really put pressure on this issue? So, so we and everybody else have two types of clients. Clients who voted for President Trump who want tax cuts and clients who didn't vote for President Trump want and want tax, tax cuts. cuts. <laughs> okay, and, and yeah, I believe that there are some very active people in this case, particularly those right now that are pointing their eye or not as much at the White House, but at, at Speaker Ryan and at uh, the Senate. They, I think, are demanding a victory. And uh, the House being reelected every two years, they're the most vulnerable. So really, I think they're the people that are saying one or the other, we have to get this done. What they have going for them this time is cooperation from the White House, not necessarily from President Trump himself at this point. That's There's still a lot of tension around that. But from Secretary Mnuchin, Gary Cohn in the National Economic Council, there, there's a lot of people on the same page. Tax reform is like way 
out there in the distance compared to other issues that we've got to talk about, which is the debt ceiling, the concerns that we've got, the threats that Donald Trump made over wall funding as well. Axios this morning saying 50 to 75 percent probability that we could see some kind of shutdown event. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs said 50-50. What do you think? What are you saying to clients? And in light of shenanigans that we've seen in the past repeating themselves this time around, how as an investor do you protect yourself short term? Does the dollar well, rally or sell off? Um, I see, as far as what the dollar would do, I don't think that that would be the, the question I would want to answer. Um, when you say history repeating itself, that's to me the issue. And history repeating itself does not mean there will be shenanigans. It means there will not be. Time and time again, they have ended up kicking the can. Now, it's two different things, debt ceiling versus the, the yes. government shutdown. Government shutdown could very well happen as a political posture. Two to three days, total non-event in the market, complete non-event. Um, the last time it happened, markets rallied for the first day. They were kind of flat for two days. It was over. It's a political event. It's not a market event. Um, but as far as the debt ceiling issue, I, I cannot tell you how many times this has happened. And, and I don't think it's something the media makes a big deal out of it. It's a real story. The media should talk about it. But it's something that time and time again, both sides, it's in their best interest to get done. They never get it done very well, but they get it done enough to move on to another story. So no blow up in September. Do we get a blow up in December then if the uh, spending bill gets kicked down the can effectively in a short term funding bill? Uh, no, because what I think they would do is actually kick it a little further than December and then and then by then be able to go into something more comprehensive and use reconciliation for tax reform. We shall see. Yes, we shall. David, thank you so much. David Bonson is founder and CIO of the Bonson. Group.